Welcome back to another show of T-M-O. This is a uh, post-analysis show of Survivor South Africa. And we are looking at episode 10 today. Um, just before we jump to the recap, because that's what we normally do. We are your hosts, Quivis and Cloudy. Um, but we've also got exciting news. <laughs> t-shirts. We've got shirts. Yeah, we've got t-shirts to give away, guys. Um, as you can see, TNR t-shirts. What we're going to do is, all you have to do is go onto Twitter. You have to hashtag Thursday Night Outcast as well as Survivor South Africa. Tell us who you think your golden spear should go to and your wooden spoon. And we'll go through the tweets and also for added bonus and to guarantee your shirt, post up a little video of yourself going T-N-O and then you've obviously got a better chance. But anyway, Kobus, take us away at the recap. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so, um, Claudio, sticking with the food theme, for for uh, analogies of of episodes, I would say um, this episode reminded me of a peanut butter sandwich. Um, nothing spectacular. Um, you were just very hungry. Grab the the sandwich and just stuffed it down your mouth. Um, but it, like I say, it wasn't anything spectacular. And then later you also realized it was your ex girlfriend who made you that sandwich, and she put in some nasties in there. And you actually regret eating the sandwich. Um, that, <laughs> that's how I feel about this episode. I don't know. I was really, I was disappointed. I wanted more. I wanted to yeah. see action. I wanted to see blind sides. I didn't get to see that. So it left me. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, just before you continue, guys, Kovis was literally, he was wearing a purple shirt. He had sexual frustration face in terms of not having his blind side this episode. So, <laughs> <laughs> so continue. Continue. Yeah. Anyway, no. So I was I was a bit disappointed. It was it was a um, it it lacked it lacked action for me. I think the best part for me was when Dante and and Team Dante and Jeff won the challenge and Jeff finally got his hug. Um, and Dante didn't <laughs> use his fist to give Jeff the hug. So I think. No, I mean that that could have been your blind side. That could have been the blind side. I mean we all expected some sort of spark, but instead it was like Cupid's arrow just poking them in the backside instead of the actual fist. <laughs> yeah, no, it was it, oh, so that was pretty cool for me. I actually rooted hard for the the Rao team. You know that was I think that's the best best thing the Rao's done on this season so far. Is uh, pick uh, Jeffrey Jeffrey and Dante in the same team, and they end, ended up actually winning the rewards challenge. So yeah, and then what happened was they sent Jock to the Island of Secrets. And that this was actually a, a, a really cool part for me was, you know, seeing how emotional Jock got just by the thought. I mean, he haven't, hasn't even seen his wife. Just by the thought of, you know, uh, having the, the, the opportunity of seeing his wife, he really got emotional and that was, uh, it, it was real. So that was cool for me to see. Um, and then Jock doing the queen wave on his uh, way back to the, to the tribe. And uh, then we saw the immunity challenge. I hoped Aquaman was going to do really well, but unfortunately, he uh, didn't do so well. Didn't end up winning. King Rob! King Rob! <laughs> um, here but, he, yeah. here he, King Rob yeah. was in town and he won the gold. Oh, not, not sorry, not the golden spear. He won the immunity award. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, he, the, your, your man at the right of you did pretty well there, holding his breath. And uh, any case, so yeah, at Tribal Council, like I said, very disappointed, very, um, yeah, it was uh, um, no surprises there. Jeffrey going home, we've got like a, a, a boring bit of, you know, like I said, it's a, a big alliance team rolling everyone. And yeah, well, that's my take on, on this episode. What, what, what stood out for you, Claudio? Uh, two things. First of all, just to sum everything up, if you were a sports fan, so if you're a football fan, this was like a Man City game versus a Norwich City 
there was a complete dominant force in this game and position was all in one side. If you're a rugby fan, it was New Zealand versus Japan. Either way, you know the whole game was one-sided. Um, I do think Corbus's analogy in terms of saying Pluto with trees, um, we only see what we only know what we see. There are some trees that are things are happening behind and we can only see things happening in front of the trees. And that's pretty much what the, the producers are showing us. So they do try and keep it a mystery in terms of which side or who's going to pair up with who and who's going what direction. Because right now, I mean, on paper, it is saying it's the Spitzshake 7 who are sticking together. But I think come the next episode, there's going to be a lot of interesting things coming. But anyway, that's pretty much my take on the recap. We're going to jump straight into the Golden Spear right about now. I'm going to go with, with Dante for the fact that he reconciled with Jeff. Um, I think that was cool. I know it's not necessarily um, enough from a strategic point of view and a whole lot of other things that you've got to take into account. But I thought it was cool. You know, he, he swallowed his pride to some extent. And um, yeah, he, he, he decided to, uh, you know, go to, to Jeff and Maba, especially... He, he, well, from a strategic point of view, he actually used the alcohol <laughs> to his advantage. And then uh, when they were a bit tipsy, he, you know, he started the conversation of, like, guys, shouldn't we maybe, you know, consider working together, yeah. yada, yada, yada. So maybe that was a good move, you know, waiting till, till they're a bit um, under the prop um, before uh, <laughs> starting that conversation. So, yeah, I think maybe I'll, I'll, I'll nominate Dante. Um, the, the rest... I don't know if someone really did enough for me in this episode to really warrant getting the golden spear. What what are you what are you what are your thoughts? No ways, bro. No, Kovis, you are wrong. You are wrong. Look, you are right with Dante. So on the point of Dante, there were for me there were two people in this game or in this episode who did everything right. And number one was Aquaman, Dante. Um, he literally did what he had to do. I like what you said last episode where you said, you know, the good thing about him is what you see is what you get. You've got loyalty. And he's exactly that. He's playing day by day. He's obviously he's messed up his relationship. So he's trying to mend them a little bit, but regardless, he goes, what's, what's in the past is in the past. We need to move forward. How can we make this work for ourselves? And not only for me, but for ourselves. And he tries to mend the relationship with Jeffrey. Jeffrey's probably, he's got too much resistance in the end to want to go down that route. But yeah, so he does that. He makes that attempt. He tries to, then um, Rob comes to him and Rob tells him, listen, dude, uh, we're voting out Jeff. So you're safe. What does Jeff, uh, what does Dante do? He keeps his, his trust and his loyalty and he goes straight to Jeffrey and he tells Jeffrey, listen, this is the plan. They're trying to get you out. So he's completely loyal again. So he's doing his part. Jeffrey doesn't bite it. And then obviously in the challenge, the first reward challenge, which I'm calling the Disky Shuffle, Disky Shuffle Challenge. He obviously was a huge factor in terms of them winning the, the Raw Challenge in the first place. So sure, you can, you can say Durant for picking him, but we also don't know what, what number he picked him. So not Durant. Um, and then obviously, then he goes to Tribal Council again and he sticks with w- what his word was. And, he's, and what we're going to see coming from him is going to be quite interesting. So that's why I nominate, or why Dante should be nominated. But obviously, this, this guy over here, look at him, this menacing face. This was his episode. When I was referring to Man City or New Zealand earlier, it was down to this guy. He was pulling strings in every angle, whether it was manipulating, lying, even, excuse me, even being friendly with the people. He's pulled in all the right, uh, right relationships. The guy on your shoulder, Corbus, Mr. Durang, was a huge <laughs> factor in like, confirming what he heard. I mean, it was a huge factor in pretty much confirming this, this man's plan. Um, he goes to him immediately. He says, cool, dude, I, can't, I trust you. But why does he trust him? Because he knows he can manipulate the shit out of him. <laughs> That's why he trusts him. And, and as, as his plan comes back, Duran comes back and tells Rob everything. Yes, uh, Dante and Jeffrey are trying to fix each other, you know, trying to fix each other, trying to get a relationship going. And he spills the beans a little bit. So he does well there. Then he does well in the challenges. And when I was watching the reward challenge, I don't know if you've heard, um, there's this little, this little bit, it's a Spanish guy calls into the radio and he says, hey guys, I want to listen to the song. And then they say, oh, what song is it? And he goes, oh, it's a ribo casanai. And they're like, yeah, we've, we've never heard of the song. He goes, no, it's a ribo casanai. They're yeah. like, oh, it's a rhythm of the night. It's the rhythm of the night. <laughs> so so, so when, when, I saw, when I saw the challenge, we had Dante on the one side, which I thought was the rebot, and we had King Rob. 
who, which is what Nicole called him, was the Nike or the Nike, the pair of Nikes. He was far superior in terms of this episode. But those are the two. It's actually very unfortunate. I think both players have um, done everything they can in the current situation, which is why I'm, I'm recommending both of them. Um, but Dante is working the best to, to his ability in terms of what he can be doing. So those, those are the two guys. I mean, and yeah, and he con completely controls the vote in the end. So that's why King Rob, man. King Rob. Mm. Legit. Yeah, yes, he, yes, I think um, you make a good point with uh, nominating King, King Rob there. Um, when when Darrell went back to Rob and, uh, and, and Rob was, okay, so tell me what happened, you know, at the rewards challenge. It reminded me of, of that scene in Aladdin. Um, I don't know if you've seen the new Aladdin movie. It's quite cool. But uh, we, we, uh, Jafar has this, has this uh, little pawn guy um, who, who, who feeds him information. And um, Jafar just, you know, he just, he just goes to that guy and just, you know. Iago, just, the parrot. He's Jafar. a Iago the parrot. That's what he is. He's not a jester. He's a Iago the parrot. I should have found out. <laughs> Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, you're right. In any case, and he just spills all the beans, and I'm like, flipping hell, man. <laughs> you're screwing stuff around here. But in any case, I don't know that Rob is pulling a, a lot of strings, but that's also for me, it feels it, it makes it predictable. It makes it, uh, you know, it's this, it's the alliance just uh, pulling more and more strings. So, yeah. I, um, but I, something I'm again not, about Rob, though. So, sorry, Kubis. Again about Rob. He is at the tribal council and everything he says, he's contradicting himself because, no, we're not contradicting himself. Sorry. He's saying what he's saying intentionally to tell everyone, yes, we, let's keep the seven strong. Let's play it one step at a time. Let's do that. And I, when no one is like, if you're thinking about the final four, you, you're thinking far too ahead of yourself. You, yeah. Why would you ruin a good thing? Meanwhile, there he is. He's already planning out his old school Saulu members as the top four, trying to make his homeboy Nathan proud. So, Definitely. yeah, well played. Yeah. Okay, but I, I, I think uh, I'm, I'll, I'll agree with you on Aquaman, but definitely not on King Rob. Um, <laughs> but, I think you're just biased. You just don't like him because he's smug. I mean, he's pretty <laughs> smug. Look at that face. Look at that face. Like he's a bit smug. A yeah. yeah. Okay. No, but I want to. I want to stick with Dante. Are you with me with Dante? Or are you feeling? No, I am with. I yeah, I am with you with Dante. But I've never seen such a one-sided episode. Man, <laughs> I've that's, never seen that before. That's that's. But, um, let's well, let's give it to Dante because from where he came from last week to where he came through now, yeah, yeah let's give it to him. I feel. I feel he is. He's. He's warranted for getting it. Oh. Yay! <laughs> there you go. Golden Spear. Congratulations, Dante. This is actually the second time Dante has won our Golden Spear. Yes. Good job. Yeah, well done. Okay. So, Wooden Spoon. Um, I'm going to get laid, Finch fucker. And it's going to be oh so good. It's going to be like, you like this shit, mama? And she's going to be like, fucking right, doggy. Give it to me. Suck on my nipples like you're, like you're milking a cow. Like. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> You been here long? Oh shit! Oh, uh, sorry, not wooden spoon. Um, the 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 Raul award um <laughs> goes to none other um in my books than uh, than the <laughs> Joker man here on my <laughs> right hand side. I would say. Um, you know, sitting at tribal council, everyone's talking strategy. Um, Nico goes, so Darrell, you, you, you won the, um, the rewards challenge, you know, tell us more what happened there. And then he goes like, no, it was nice, Nico. I got a leg massage, you know, we had like all the, we, all, we had unlimited chocolate. Oh, and sandwiches. Yes, there were sandwiches. He reminded me of, of uh, uh, Baba in Forrest Gump. Like uh, uh, with all the shrimp deals, you know, there's a whole, there's a war going on, and Baba is here. Like you can have your shrimp barbecued, you can have it broiled, you can have it boiled, you can have shrimp um, grilled, shrimp, shrimp cocktail. You know, <laughs> Baba, Baba, when I get home, I will, I want to start a shrimp shrimp company. <laughs> well, there's, there's the fireworks going around, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. So anyway, um, I feel like. <laughs> 
<laughs> the, the Rao Award, I'm nominating the Rao. <laughs> and uh, yeah, what's your take for the, the Rao Award? Is he your only nomination? Eh? That's Is my that only nomination. Okay, I would, you know what? Yeah. I would, I think, um, actually, no, there's actually two more. Oh, shocking. <laughs> <laughs> hit it, hit it. Let's see who else he Letitia, for asking people to vote her off. Mm. Boom, weak. Don't like it. Yeah. Just flipping, I don't know. The, yeah, yeah, I didn't like the fact that you asked. So Letitia, did Letitia, I mean, yeah, Let, Letitia's situation is what I call sick attention. Um, she's just completely frustrated. I mean, she had this image of herself in terms of how she's going to play this game if she had one. She sees herself as like the older person amongst all the kids. So she wants to have more of an influence on the game itself, not necessarily on the relationships, but on the game. And she's found herself in a position where she's just a number. No one's talking to her. She's the last one to hear things. Wherever they tell her to vote, she votes. Then she goes to challenges and she's like, well, this is my time to shine within this game. So I'm actually going to do some things. And she doesn't perform really well. So she's super frustrated. So then she is pretty much crying. When I say crying, I don't mean actual tears. She's just so frustrated. She's not part of the game. So she tells the guys, listen, vote me off. And then obviously Mike, big save, Mike keeps her in because he needs a number. He needs her. That's a big part of what he's going to do going forward. So he convinces her to stay. So that's all there was. It was a sick attention thing. Does she deserve the wooden spoon for it? I don't think so. I mean, she definitely needs to be mentioned for it because she actually got some screen time. So yeah. yeah. Anyway, sorry. Who asked you want to name? And then the other one was, I would say, Maba. I don't, Maba is not doing anything. She's doing bugger all. Oh, you know, yeah. slipping into the, uh, the challenge, the immunity challenge. Boom, first one out of the immunity challenge. No surprises there. Um, but also, okay, just quickly mentioning Dante again. Um, I heard Dante in the background. Uh, careful, Maba, don't slip, Maba, when they, <laughs> when they were doing the immunity after the rewards challenge. And I thought, you know, that's cool. You know, he, he, you know, he completely forgave her. What's in the past is in the past. So, um, but, you know, she's not, I don't know, she's not uh, making strategic moves. She's doing bugger all. She's, uh, so, yeah, I know, I'm also nominated okay. for wooden, uh, the Rouse Award. Um, and, and, and your nominations apart from, from Letitia. Well, uh, I think Durang is a good one. I mean, he's an absolute yes man. He doesn't think he doesn't think in this game. Or I, I don't know what his whole plan is. I mean, let's go back to Rob. Rob is the big guy on campus. He is the main man on campus. Everyone wants to suck up to him. Uh, I think uh, Durang's like, yeah, the cool guy actually likes me now. Now I'm a cool guy. So and that's why he's done whatever he's done. But he's literally not thinking about strategy at all. He had a huge opportunity to align with the other guys and possibly try and flip the game on its head and flip the power. He didn't see that at all. Let's let go. He opens his mouth again at Tribal Council. I think the award, like you've said, is the Dara Award. But apart from giving it to him as the award, I think we should also say like have like a subcategory in terms of what will he say next to Tribal Council? <laughs> because this soak says all the wrong things. He tells I mean, also Jeff. Jeff is my main, so forget about the wrong now. The wrong's had his say. Jeffrey, unfortunately. I mean, he just gets caught off guard. He falls for the typical South African loyalty card, forgetting that he is playing Game of Survivor. Mm -hmm. uh, people think he's a bigger threat than what he is. He comes in, he relies on his relationships. Dante says all the wrong things, should be sending alarm bells to him, but he still sticks with his decision to say, cool, you know, I'm going to stick with what I have. To be fair, the numbers are all a bit whack. I mean, there was a lot of work that had to be done. So Jeffrey's name is on the chopping block. He does try to do what he needs to do. He relies on his, his old relationships. I mean, gets lied to blatantly by Rob. Gets lied to by Nicole. And he still thinks he's like, hey, I'm, this is Survivor, but I'm still going to be trustworthy and loyal. And then he's, he's, he's number one ally throughout the game. Who you've mentioned, Mother, did nothing. I mean, what is she doing? Like, why was she not rallying for him? You know, yeah. like, that's the sort of thing. It felt like one guy. And then the, actually, the guy who was doing the damage, or trying to do the damage, Dante, who I think Dante is also... Dante's problem within the game is that he comes across very abrasive. He doesn't know how to speak with you. He speaks at you. He pretty much tells you what you're doing. And I think Jacques mentions it. He says, like, um, Dante is, is a difficult to play, play, uh, player to play with because he comes across very impulsive and he comes across very forceful. Um, but anyway, back to Jeffrey. I just, I, like, this is a game of Survivor, man. There's Gullible. I think he thought Gullible had a, a silent W in it or something. I just, he, he <laughs> ate <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yo, <laughs> on that so, point, on that point, Claudio, he, he promised Nicole no, never to write her na- name down. I mean, that's a stupid why? promise to make. You, you yeah. Know, but why do you make that promise to someone? You, you know, you can always promise them that you won't write their name down down in a specific tribal council, but not. It it shouldn't be an absolute promise. I'm never gonna write your name down. That's stupid because they're not they're not promising something back to you. So why would you do that? No, that was dumb. Yeah. That was stupid. Um, yeah, man. And he just he just gets caught because of the reputation that's been built for him. That move that he had against Nathan, that yeah. whole little thing that came back to bite him in the ass. Rob remembered it. Everyone remembered it. And that move in particular made him seem like. He was the strategic genius. And I actually think he got a bit lucky with that vote in the end. And this is the consequence. And he couldn't shake off that perception of him being a strategic genius. I mean, you've got Corbis in there, who's been very quiet this whole season, but he, he lands up on the right side of the votes every time. You've got Jacques, who's finding hidden media idols. He's being quiet. And now, anyway, you've got all these things. And these guys land up thinking Jeffrey, the guy who walks around with this goofy face, like Shen, what a nice guy though. I'd love to have a drink with him one day. He just seems so. Yeah, it seems like a solid anyway. guy. Yeah, but anyway, yeah. So those are the nominations. I don't know. What are you thinking? Where are your thoughts lying? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Tarang, Jeffrey, Mabba. Tarang, yes. Jeffrey, it's Mabba. A, it's a, it's, it's really a tough call. But I think for us not to be predictable, not let's not award the the wrong award to the round and give it. I don't know, but at, at the same time, if we do give it to him, it's, yeah. it's a record. I mean, four, four wooden spoons in a row. Yes, that is, <laughs> I mean, that's something spectacular. I mean, that is yeah. that's something beyond I mean, a hat trick. <laughs> yeah, do, do, exactly. Do you want to give up that opportunity, Kovac? Yes. I don't know. That is <laughs> I don't know. I think, I think you made a very good point. Let's hand mm-hmm. him, let's yeah. hand him his <laughs> award, the round. Wop, wop, wop. <laughs> well done, the wrong one. Making history on Thursday Night Outcast. <laughs> Four wooden spoon awards. Anyway. Congrats, man. Storm is yeah, brewing. So, but, yeah, Storm is brewing. I've got enough of you, man, Tooth. This is going to end right here, right now. Let's dance, dickweed. You want to dance, Ron? I want a polka. Come get a taste. Rick, where'd you get a hand grenade? I don't know. All right. Let's do this. I'm excited for next week's episode. Reason why Mm -hmm. is there was a question on Mnet saying that we've got to predict how many um, immunity necklaces will be in play. So that means we'll be seeing uh, two tribal councils. Um, They're going to split. I think they're going to split the group. We'll have two tribes again. Um, They'll probably draw rocks to decide who's going to be in the... Do you think that's going to happen? They'll compete. Yep. I think so. That's, that's That's what my suspicion is. And boom, 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 we'll have two, well, multiple immunity necklaces. Maybe, maybe not. And uh, so, yeah, I think that's going to make for an interesting tribal council. And then hopefully I'll get my blind side that I've been hoping for. Yeah, man. I mean, another, another possible thing, it could just be two people playing their immunity idols at the same time at the same tribal council. That's another option. Yeah, mm-hmm. no? Maybe? Well, the, the thing is, the thing is, uh, quickly, Claudio, they've got to still vote out about eight players and they've got six or five or six episodes left to do it in. So they have to do, a, um, they have to have an episode where they vote out multiple okay. ways. Cool. That's pretty exciting. That's pretty cool. Yes. Um, the, the other thing is, I think what's quite cool to look out for is you've got Dante and Mabba, who are kind of the orphans in the alliances. The last one's there. Now these orphans are going to get together and try and make, make shit happen. So I think that's quite exciting. Mm. Uh, that's something to look out for. I do think uh, Sipa getting very complacent saying, you know, it's all about the split shake seven. 
I think this is kind of where Rob has edged her a little bit in this in this progression because he's he's looking beyond the seven. She's so fixated on the actual seven. I do think you've got guys like Mike, like Jacques, who I mean, it seemed frustrating this episode because they kept the seven tight, but they know that Rob is the guy. They know Rob's pulling the strings. So I think Rob's in trouble. And interesting thing is that he's the king. He's the king. Um, and we know what the king does. He sits on the throne. And if Game of Thrones is anything to go by, that's a dangerous position to be on. You do not want to be on the throne because those are the guys that get, yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's something to, to look out for. Oh, nice. they're pretty much going to be a bunch of piranhas eating themselves. That's, that's pretty much where we're going to be. Yeah. Yeah, well, ice streaks catch the most wind. And um, especially on Survivor, you know, it's one moment you're at the top, next moment you're below the bottom. So... Yes, but I, I'm just hoping, I want to see some action, I want to see some changes, I don't want to see a steamroller alliance, you know, just um, hitting people over one by one, that's boring, so, yes. I've, we want the little guy to start fighting back, that's yes. what we want. Yes. Yes. Come on, little people. I want to see oh. the other dogs biting the other dog's head off, you know, ripping it to yeah, pieces. Yeah, violence. <laughs> <laughs> Um, anyway, back to the point, guys. Yeah. What we need to do is, if you have not subscribed, you guys suck. Just subscribe, man. Yeah. Just do it. Do it. Do it yeah. now. Do it. <laughs> yeah. And just another look at the t-shirts. We got the front, which is all the flame. It's a hot. Also, there's a warning sign at this, and it's going to come across very corny. But only wear these shirts if you want to get lit. <laughs> no, that is bad. Right. That is bad. <laughs> Claudia, thanks for joining yeah. me for another episode of TNO. It was big fun. I'll chat to you again next week. Whoop whoop. Yes. See you later.